starting with the cons, ending with the pros. So the first con of this boat is going to be the storage solution. There's not a whole lot of storage here on this boat, and there are many, many things you can do about that. Backpacks, they've got storage that go on the back of seats, uh, but I actually just took some old cooler that was too small for anything, and uh, I have just the same leftovers from here on that. So you open it up, and it's just a little bit of dry storage with some papers. Uh, so the storage in here isn't the best, but this can hold quite a bit as well as quite a bit of weight. Uh, so that's going to be my first con is no integrated dry storage, but it's a tiny boat. So it's kind of the point, you know, you don't, you're not going to get any of that on a kayak or anything. And you're going to have to get a proper boat to get any sort of built in dry storage. Uh, you can come up with your own solution fairly easily and cheap, but that is a con. The next con is going to be maneuverability. Now, this is something that you can solo load into the back of a pickup truck. However, I found that to be kind of difficult. Uh, it's a little bit bulkier than some of the other tiny boats, and especially a kayak. And obviously, you can get into many places where a traditional boat couldn't get to. It's still not as maneuverable as honestly I thought it would be. I ended up just getting a Harbor Freight trailer and throwing it on there, and that did make things a lot easier. Uh, but it did not come with these handles up front. I'll link them down below. I'll link all of these mods down below, including the seats and everything. But these did not come factory with it. These were an aftermarket install, and this incredibly increases the maneuverability, and I'll usually pick it up here and drag it onto the trailer. Uh, so the maneuverability can be kind of difficult. You do have handles on the stern, However, there's just two on the stern, but they're very sturdy and work very well. But adding aftermarket handles up here really increases its maneuverability, but it's a little bit heavier and more awkward to move around in the bed of a pickup truck than I originally thought. The third con is it's kind of a pro because a lot of tiny boats don't have these, but I've just got to mention it because there's so few cons, I don't want to just have two, uh, is there is no rod holders in the rear. And as you can see, this boat is not designed to walk past each other. Sometimes me and my wife will switch positions and uh, I'll have to walk on the edge here. And we have never flipped. I'm 170, 175 pounds. We've never flipped. We haven't really felt like it. But still, uh, it's kind of annoying having to hand her my rod every time. Because usually I've got these loaded with water bottle, tackle, lures, phones, all sorts of different stuff. So I don't like to lay my rod across here. Um, but it's a simple, I've got them coming in the mail, uh, you know, 30 bucks, you can get some clamp on rod holders. I'll be making videos with that soon. Uh, so I will have rod holders. It's a cheap upgrade and you can permanently install it if you want for basically just as cheap. Uh, so I am going to say that is a big drawback is not having rod holders in the front, but I'm grateful we have, or in the rear, sorry, uh, but I'm grateful that we ro have rod holders at all in the front. Okay. With that being said, that is really all the cons. Thank you to EmpireDigest.com. They help regular people build and grow thriving online businesses so they can live their best life possible. They are part of an elite community of highly successful internet entrepreneurs on a mission to help regular everyday people break free from mediocrity and create the best life possible. Sounds similar to this channel. They're doing this by helping you start and grow highly successful location independent online businesses that provide unlimited income potential and time freedom and the ability to turn your dreams into reality faster than anything else that you've tried. Take advantage right now by clicking the first link in my description. The first pro is we're gonna start with the stability. Now, because it's the pontoon style, not a solid flat bottom, I can walk on the edge without fear of flipping. Our other tiny boat, the water tender, was a flat bottom design, uh, which was not very stable. This is far, far more stable. So the stability for this type of boat, especially compared to even a big top of the line fishing kayak, is a 10 out of 10. This thing couldn't really be any more stable. The way it's built, it keeps your weight distributed evenly. And if you walk up into the front, you walk up into the rear, it's not gonna go like this. There's enough weight on it to keep it going. So that is the number one pro for me is the absolute stability with these things with me and my wife spinning around and uh, you know oftentimes we're both facing the same direction you know casting onto the bank or something and our feet are hanging off and we're not even hardly tilting uh, so that's going to be a major pro for me another pro is simply all of the features so a lot of these tiny boats don't come with a lot of things that this boat comes with we got two rod holders we have two bow stern we have two bow cleats 
two stern cleats that actually came with it. You've got carrying handles. Let me scoot this up here. You have a battery tray and interior drain plug, two exterior drain plugs for the pontoons. This was aftermarket. Uh, all of the flooring was aftermarket. Uh, I'm gonna mention this real quick, the way that these little slots are designed. So if you, you know, splash some water up, you spill a drink, it's designed to run through out into here, underneath the foam and pool back here. Uh, so I will say the water drainage in this boat is really, really handy. Uh, this could be lowered a little bit because you do have to tilt the boat to get the interior water out, but we almost never take on water. And in fact, I've only had to do that once it's because I left it outside when it was pouring rain. So other than that, yeah, the water drainage system is really, really good in this boat. Also, you can put your battery in the battery tray. You can hook this up pre-wired inside the hull to a plug-in here hidden behind the anchor. So you can actually have your trolling motor up front you plug it right into that. So your trolling motor's up here and you can have an outboard. I'm really interested in the Newport Vessels electric outboard. Uh, so hopefully I can run a trolling motor and the outboard on the same boat with the same battery, but it's, I don't know if that's really gonna work because it's a 36 volt battery. Well, that's a video for another day. Uh, but I will say that is a very, very nice feature uh, that a lot of boats, you know, real boats don't even have like John boats. So I really greatly appreciate that. Uh, this is an aftermarket piece, this mount right here. So I'm not going to include that. But also let's talk about the seats because this is really, really what makes this boat. Now these are aftermarket seats. Um, I don't think they make these exact seats anymore. I'll link the next best thing to what Amazon has now. Uh, that's like 50 bucks. It's money very, very well spent. But even with the original seats, the 360 design is phenomenal. The fact that you can scoot them however you want. So when me and my wife are talking to each other, I don't have the motor on it now, but I'll usually have the motor in the upright position and we can just talk to each other like that. Or, you know, oops, a lot of times we will also fish like this so we can fish and keep our leg room and just kind of shove stuff in like that. And it's kind of this situation. She's a lot shorter than me, so she needs a lot less leg room. Uh, but this allows us to both stand if we need to. Uh, we can scoot it back and fish this direction, that direction, whatever. The seats really, really make it, even if they don't come with the super soft seats that I've upgraded to. Uh, so that is gonna be a major, major benefit. The fact that you can move the seats into whatever position you want. Now, I think one of the last things we've talked about stability, the price. Let's talk about the price. This brand new is about 800 bucks. You know what I paid for this base boat? I paid for this boat $300. Now, of course, I did all the flooring and stuff, uh, but it came with, you know, a paddle holder, it came with the upgraded seats, and it came with these. Uh, so, you know, for $300, I actually bought a kayak for $200 and sold it for $350. It was a fishing kayak, because why would I spend $300 on a kayak when I could spend $300 on this and have it you know, powered by an actual trolling motor and all these luxuries and all this extra space. And the fact that I've never actually even heard of anybody tipping these. And we take this out into the ocean with currents. We've taken it out white capping with 15 mile an hour winds. We've taken this out onto some of the rough ocean conditions and we took on almost no water, uh, hardly any water at all. In fact, the only water we got in it might've been from a fish we caught. Uh, but it just, it's a tank, man. I've seen videos of people trying to sink these things. They just, they won't do it. You can fill them up as much as you can, but they just don't sink. They hardly ever flip. I don't even think you can sink them unless you're pulling drain plugs. Even then, this is all covered in foam. So I'm not even sure if it would sink then. Uh, so it's super safe, super stable, especially for the price. $800, even brand new. You could get a, a Minn Kota trolling motor and a 100 amp hour lead acid battery. You know, you're in for a thousand bucks. And uh, I know someone, uh, my best friend's mother, which we're very close with, or I'm very close with, and she has uh, one of those Hobby Pro kayaks, those fishing kayaks, and that's a $2,700 kayak. $2,700 kayak, she has two. She, she has about six grand worth of kayaks for two people to go out, and you still can't be on the same kayak, you know, you don't get the luxury of 360 view. Like this for 300 bucks, I'm gonna harp on it over and over. You you can't beat it, or uh, sorry, $800. Even for $800, you really can't beat this. Uh, 800 is 
just as good of a deal in my opinion. Obviously 300 is, if you get it, you could double your money and still go buy another one and make more money. In fact, this boat was supposed to be a flip, but I ended up falling in love with it and customizing it. Uh, so with that being said, I don't know if there's a whole lot other else that we can talk about on the pros and cons because it's a pretty simple boat with a lot of features that you may or may not have had. I'm hoping that I addressed a lot of the popular questions, including stability, price, and the fact that this thing is basically, you can customize it however you want. That's actually what I really like about this. So a lot of what I've done so far is mostly cosmetic. I wanted to kind of dampen the sound because I'm walking around, I like to stand up, I drop my phone, I drop stuff. I just wanted everything to be a little bit softer and more foamy so it wouldn't echo and make a big noise and scare the fish in the water. But I'm not gonna get into too much details because I don't like talking about things I'm gonna do. I like doing the things and showing you, but we've got clamp on, quick release anchors. We've, we're having fish finders, depth finders. I'm actually going to have like a big tablet screen over here. Uh, we, we've got all sorts of stuff. We've got nav lights, of course, new motors and batteries and battery housings coming. Uh, we've got upgraded paddles. We have a bimini top. We have so much stuff coming for this boat. And that's what I wanna end this video on is the fact that you can customize it to your very, very, very specific needs. You can drill into this plastic. You can, no problem. You can clamp onto this plastic. It actually really works. You can have adhesive things stick to this plastic, of course. Uh, so I'm going to end this video on saying how customizable this is to your very, very specific scenario. And uh, for us, of course, we like to fish, but we want to go to Shell Island and a lot of the other little ocean spots. So, you know, having a bimini top and all this extra fun stuff, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're getting an inflatable dock that we can attach to the side of it when we anchor and we can have a fishing platform. Uh, but my point being is that you can do a lot, a lot of things to these boats very cheaply to make it the exact fishing vessel you you want, depending on if it's going to be ponds, rivers, lakes, oceans, it doesn't matter. I'm an ocean guy myself. Occasionally we will go on a lake, but I like the blue water. So it works for me. It's great for fresh water. It's great for salt water. It's great for anybody of any strength because, you know, I'm a smaller guy. I'm a 6'1", but I'm only 175 pounds. So, you know, if I can lift it in, older folks can lift it in. If not, you can get a cheap trailer. It's just really... Everybody can make this their own personal little oasis, you know, a nice private spot. Now I could talk all day about this tiny boat, but I think I'm gonna end the video here. I'm gonna enjoy the holidays, I hope you do as well. And then we're gonna come back with the new year with just as many adventures that me and my wife can get ourselves into in beautiful Florida with this wonderful rig. I hope this helped answer as many questions as humanly possible. If not, let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.